Hello, my name is Jens Michael Bergman. I'm a mining engineer and I work for Tom Ross Sorting since more than 10 years now. Today I want to share with you our field experience about the installation at Maden Wad Jamal Phosphate Corporation in Saudi Arabia. Why do we meet here? We want to feed people. We want to feed the whole world. And phosphates are essential to feed the whole world. Where do these phosphates come from? As we all know, first of all, they're from the mining industry. And then it all goes through the beneficiation plant, it goes through the sulfuric acid production, and finally we end up in the ammonia plant for a final product. Tomra focuses on the beneficiation of phosphates. The targets are certainly mainly to produce high quality ammonia, but what do we want? High recovery, lowest costs. We want to be economical and we want to be absolutely environmentally friendly. And in all these four points, Tomra sorting equipment is a key to success. Who's Tomra? Tomra is a globally operating company with about 4,000 employees. And in 2019, we had about 1 billion US dollars on turnover. Tomra is divided in two main business streams. Number one is Tomra Sorting Solutions, and number two is Tomra Collection Solutions. Collection Solutions is mainly all about the reverse vending machines, which take back your empty beverage containers, Coca-Cola uh, cans, bottles, etc., etc. And finally, mainly the plastic then is treated in the material recovery section. The other business stream of Tomra is Tomra Sorting Solutions, divided in three business streams, food, recycling and mining. The food industry takes care that all our apples and potatoes and nuts and peanuts and gummy bears are of good quality. In the recycling section, we take care that all the used materials which come back from the industries, electronic scrap, automobile shredder, plastic, household waste, is going back into the circle of material recovery and going back into new products. And last and the smallest division is Tomra Mining, where we take care about the sorting of different minerals, ores, slags, or even precious things like diamonds. Today we're talking about the mining industry. We're talking about phosphates. And the phosphate company we're talking about today is Marden's Wachamal operation, which is located in the northernmost part of Saudi Arabia, very close to the borders of Jordan and Iraq. This is how it looks like. As you see, you see nothing. It's only desert. But what you see in the middle of the desert is this huge installation. It's a plant which contains a mine, a pre-beneficiation, a beneficiation plant, a sulfuric acid plant, and a deammonium phosphate plant. Everything is there. It's a huge installation, and if you want, it's pretty easy to find it if you use Google Earth. I want to show something to you now about the actual process. The run of mine the feedstock here is 13.5 million tons per year, which averages out to something like 3,200 tons per hour. The average content of silicon dioxide, like mainly, mainly chert, is about 10%. Uh, it certainly fluctuates between 5 to 7%, and the maximum can be 30 or even up to 40%. But for all following calculations, we use the 10%. Simplified, we do a screen, a separation, a size separation at 9 millimeters, which in average separates the material 50-50. That means 1,600 tons per hour are smaller than 9 millimeter and go to different streams, and 1,600 tons per hour are larger than 9 millimeter. The larger 9mm material goes to this red symbol, the sorting house. The sorters remove 90, 95, 98% of the chert of the high silica pieces. That means about 200 tons an hour 
are rejected going into the waste stream and about 1,400 tons an hour go to the following impact crusher. The silica content of that 1,400 tons per hour is much, much lower than 1%. After impact crushing, everything is smaller than 9 millimeters is recombined to the HPGR going to the rod mills and then about 3,000 tons an hour with an average content of silica of 6% go to the flotation plant, which is in the tailing or the final end of the beneficiation plant. Certainly, a modern company is already removing a lot of silica directly in the mine. They certainly use selective mining. You know, you can remove the existing high silica layers so that the church level of the runoff mine, which is fed to the plant, is reduced down to 10% already. Now, Tomra can remove the church reliably that the actual excavation process in the mine does not need to be hyper accurate anymore. Now it's allowed to feed some more chert to the plant because you know someone is going to remove it, someone or something. That means at the end, you have less valuable phosphate ore going to the waste dumps. That means you recover more phosphate and finally the life of mine is extended. Coming back to the increased recovery, what I said before, the excavation Closer to the high churd veins means a lower selectivity, a higher recovery, and an increased life of mine before it goes to this complete pre-beneficiation plant. I think everybody of you knows the bond index. It's about the energy you need to crush a certain amount of material to a certain size. Here you see the bond index of flintstone and the bond index of phosphate rock. The ratio is about 2.5, even higher than 2.5. That means you need two and a half times more energy to crush a piece of chert to a given size compared to crushing a piece of appetite to a certain size. The savings here, only here, are one million US dollar per year for electrical power only. So where is the bond and index playing a role in the, in the flowchart we have here? Mainly we are in the crushing part, the impact crusher. You have a huge abrasion and huge wear on the blow bars in the impact crusher. The HPGR is crushing down all the silica to very, very small pieces. And finally you have the rod mills. So you have three main stations where you have high wear and high consumption of, of milling equipment. Let's take a look into wear. Maybe you have heard about the rock abrasion index. I found this table and there are some comparable minerals as for the phosphates like dolomite or limestone, which is comparable. And we have the quartzite, which represents all the high silica material. The abrasion index of the quartzite is incredibly high versus the dolomite or limestone. And if you look into flint, it's even higher. I found values which are between 200 and 600. So let's take just an average of 400. Where does this wear play a role? Mainly in the impact crusher, HPGR, rod mills, and all the pumps and the pipes. Furthermore, you have it everywhere around the whole plant, every transfer chute, every vibratory feeder, every ventilator, every flotation cell, everything suffers from wear. The Tomra sorters at the Marden plant remove about 700,000 tons of chert per year. Now, if you imagine the abrasion index of that chert is about 100 times higher than that of the phosphate ore, then by removing 40% of the flint, of the total flint, the abrasion index of the remaining material is two and a half times less. And only here for the crushers, the mills and the pumps, etc., etc., the sorting saves more than 35 million US dollars per year on wear parts.
only on the where part. Additionally, you don't have the downtime for replacing all those where parts. That means increased availability and a higher production. And now we come to the flotation reagents. As you see in our flowchart, there is a huge flotation plant at the end of the beneficiation. And you need a lot of chemicals to remove the silica from the appetite. And since 700,000 tons of pure silica do not have to be removed with flotation anymore, and we have something like $6 on a ton of silica removed as, as chemical cost, we have a savings here of 4.2 million US dollars per year. And since it's a greenfield operation, the whole flotation plant was designed and built 40% smaller than originally planned only because of this benefit of not having that huge amount of silica in the feed material to the flotation cells. This is a little cost savings summary table. You can see the figures yourself, but you see the savings of the crushing and million, uh, milling with one million is rather low already. We have much, much higher savings on the wear part and much higher savings on the flotation reagents. On the other hand, certainly we have some cost for the sorting and we have a loss of phosphate, which is certainly not recovered by the sorters. Overall, we still have some savings of 30 million US dollars per year. Um, what is not mentioned here, because the overgrinding in the milling is reduced by removing the flint, there will also be an additional recovery of phosphate, which is not calculated in this table because I just cannot, you cannot grab it. What are the other benefits? As I have mentioned before, the flotation plant was built at only 60% of the size of what was necessary without sorting. That means 40% smaller in size is less water, less chemical reagents, less energy. Other non-tangible data has to be, let's say, developed in very, very in-depth studies. We can achieve more recovery in the run of mine by less selective mining. There's much less wear in the conveying and stacking and reclaiming and the flotation equipment. And certainly there is less downtime for the repairs. And we have the environmental impacts, less water consumption, less chemical consumption, less energy, which all in all means a smaller carbon footprint. When we were at site, we spoke to a senior process engineer and spokesman of Martin Wachamal. And he stated that before he joined the project, he did not even know what this technology is and what it is good for. And now he is convinced that he would never build any beneficiation plant without it. Thank you for that statement, sir. We already touched quite a bit the economic advantages of installing such sorting equipment inside modern phosphate operation. But what is it about? What is the technology behind it? In a very, very simple picture, I try to explain it here. We have a belt based sorting machine. That means the material is transported forward on a fast moving conveyor belt. The unsorted material is fed from a vibratory feeder entering to the belt. It is spread on the complete belt because we have to look at every individual piece. Then there is an X-ray source and an X-ray sensor underneath the belt. And the signal of the X-rays which penetrate the rocks will be analyzed by a computer and the computer will actuate the valves by this compressed air system here. And once the computer detects a piece of chert or flint, it will just kick out that rock to one bin and all the good fine appetite or phosphate ore is just accepted, falls down in the other bin and goes to the process. The physical background behind this is the different attenuation of X-rays inside the different minerals. 
The SiO2 of the chert is a rather low dense material in comparison to the apatite. See, it's a quite a complicated formula, lots of calcium and phosphate, etc., etc., and that ends up to a very high average atomic density where, versus the chert having a rather low average atomic density. Here you see two pieces of rocks, one piece of apatite and one piece of chert. The X-ray image of these two pieces does not really show a big difference. But if you look at the X-ray image, which is taken by Tomra's dual energy technology, you see a huge difference. You see the chert material is all represented by the red pixels, low density, and the appetite is represented by the blue pixels, which are higher in density. The only thing the sorter has to do, focus on the red pieces and eject all the red pieces by accurate compressed air jets. Here are the pictures of some test work we have done for Marden beforehand. You see the feed material is a mixture of phosphate and chert in one bin. And the objective is certainly to remove as much chert as even possible before going to the downstream process of crushing and milling, calcination or flotation. This is the product. You see all the phosphate ore is rather pure and in the red little bowl here on the top, you see there's one piece which was accepted by mistake. On the other side, you see the pure eject, the pure waste. Chert, 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 and a little bit of appetite, a little piece of appetite was kicked out by mistake. That means in this example, the chert content was decreased from 11% to 0.2, which means an efficiency of 98%, and the recovery was also 98%. Certainly, it was, it's a very good example, but that's how it works. Here we are back in the plant and have a big, big picture of what is installed. The first section here, you see one, two, three, four sorters, which are meant for the fine material between 9 and 25 millimeters. Each of these sorters has a capacity of 100 tons an hour. In the right section, you see one, two, three, four, or five sorters who take care about the other sizes like 25 to 70 millimeters and 70 to 100 something millimeters. And at the end, you have a conveyor belt, which is bringing all the waste, all the dis detected waste out to a waste pile outside the plant. The sorting machines themselves, as you can see them here, they are based on X-ray transmission technology. They have certain ejection systems, the details you can read here, different nozzle grids. They have a working width of 2 meter and 40 each. Um, they eject about 10% of silica, uh, but they can even eject more, so up to 30 or even 40% of the material could be ejected. The total nameplate capacity is 1,800 tons per hour, and you can see it here, 4 times 100, 3 times 200, and 2 times 400 tons per hour. The sorters are also quite flexible and can be used for a wide size range. That allows in the future to change the cut points of the screening plant, if necessary, with only minor changes to the machines themselves. Further, for a limited period of time, the sorters can operate even far above their nameplate capacity. On the right you see a picture of a belt scale that shows 507.9 tons an hour on a sorter which has only 420 tons per hour as maximum capacity. That also says that fluctuations inside the particle size distribution of the feed can be handled. As a short summary, there are quite some economic benefits around this. All in all, it's essential to remove the chert as a, in a very, very early stage of the rock phosphate beneficiation process. Marden Wadjamal Phosphate Company saves around 30 million US dollars per year in operation expenditures only. Other benefits, as for instance, the life of mine and the higher recovery through less overgrinding are not really tangible and we need to execute in-depth studies to find out what these benefits are. Finally, there are some 
nice reactions which we realized in the past years. Whenever one of the sorters is down, for whatever reason, is it maintenance, repair, the mill operators downstream realize this instantaneously and they give them a call. And that shows that the outcome, the product of the sorter is really important to the plant's overall performance. As the closing words, I just want to highlight Tomra's promise to all of our customers. We provide a trusted technology and we want to be the partners of all of our clients for good business and to protect the environment. Thank you very much for your attention.